I've been creating Anki flashcards while I read on my Kindle for a while now, and I would like to share that process in case it would be useful for anyone else. So in particular, I use it to read Spanish books and create flashcards for new vocabulary and sentences while I'm reading. For example, um, if I'm reading right now and I don't know what hogar means, I can click on it and I have a Spanish English dictionary installed which helps me out and I see, okay, it means like fireplace or home. And then if I want to create an Anki flashcard, I can click note and then type that definition that I just saw. And this will become the back of my flashcard later in Anki. And then let's say I don't know what planta means. Again, I can use my Spanish English dictionary. And I see it means floor. Okay. And if I would like that whole sentence to be a flashcard, again, I can create a highlight and note it. Okay. So essentially I've created two flashcards so far. And I'll just keep reading. And let's see. Subir. Maybe that's new to me as well. Una ventaja. Just as an example this time, I'll just highlight it and not add a note so you can see later what happens with that one. Um, so now I have one, two, three, four, five different flashcards we're going to create. So I'll show that in the next step. So on your computer, you need to go to this URL, which I'll put in the description, and then click on release. Now in the future, I may have later releases that won't necessarily work with these exact steps that I'm showing in the video. So if you want to follow this exact video, make sure you scroll to the bottom and choose initial release, and then click on source code. We're going to download that to your computer. And now we need to unzip that file. So you can see here, I have a terminal open. I'm going to unzip it. You can also unzip it through um, your file browser. Um, but next you need to enter that unzip directory in a terminal. And the first time that you run this, you need to install some Python packages with this command. Um, additionally, you can use a virtual environment if you prefer. The instructions are in the readme on GitHub. Um, but for simplicity, this is the easiest way to do it. Um, just run this command. I've already done it, so I'm not going to run that right now. And next, you need to make sure your Kindle is plugged into your computer. So I have mine plugged in with a micro USB cable. And I can navigate to it, go to the Documents folder. And this is the one file we need from the Kindle. It's called myclippings.txt. It stores the highlights, notes, and bookmarks that you make while you're reading on your Kindle. Um, so we just need to copy the directory that's in. And then we're going to run Clippy and just pass it the path to that file and let it run. And you'll see that it creates a collection.json file. Uh, essentially, just converted that file to this new format. It didn't modify the original. Um, and now we can run Marky. And by the way, for these two programs, Clippy and Marky, if you ever forget how to run them, you can always run the program with no arguments and you'll see um, some instructions on how to run it. Um, so for Marky, we need to pass it the JSON file, which is collection.json, and then an output folder, which will be created by the program. I'll just call mine output. Additionally, I'm going to use this optional argument, update, outdate. In the future, when we have done some more reading and we open our Kindle, um, we don't want the flashcards that we make this time to show up again um, because then we have to delete those and uh, it's just easier if every time only the newest flashcards show up since the last time you made them. Um, so that's what this flag does. Um, I'll explain more later. And the program is going to default to creating for every book both a markdown and a CSV file. Um, if you want, you can type Y here and specify for every book create, whether to create only a markdown or only a CSV file, for example, or both. Um, but CSV file is what we need to create the flashcards. I'm just going to stick with the defaults, Y, and let it save the settings. Okay. So it did create our settings file, settings.json, which we'll use next time so that we know which notes and highlights we've already turned into flashcards and we also now have our output folder so if you go in the output folder now you'll see that each book had a csv and a markdown file created so for the book that i was looking at earlier i'm just going to open the csv in a spreadsheet editor you can use any one um, even google sheets uh, and then just import your csv and so you'll see that we have couple different columns here, but these first two are all that we care about. 
The first column will become the front of our flashcard and the second will become the back. So while I'm here, I'll just correct this typo. And the highlight that I left without a note, I can now add the definition here. And because these columns are gonna become flashcards, we don't want this heading itself to become a flashcard. So we can just do delete row and now save and overwrite the original CSV file. And now we can open Anki and import this file to create our flashcards. So in Anki, choose File, Import, select our CSV file, and you'll see it's gonna use column one as the front of the flashcard, column two is the back. It's also trying to use the third column, which has some junk in it, um, to, to tag the flashcard, but we're gonna make it ignore that instead. And you can also choose the type of flashcard. I'm gonna do basic and reversed. I like that because each of these pairs will become essentially two flashcards. So one with the Spanish word on the front and the other with the English on the front, Spanish on the back. And I can also choose the deck to add the flashcards to. Um, so I can use an existing one, um, but for in this case, I'll just create a new one. All right, import, five notes added, which is good, we have five. And now we have our new deck. And if we want, we can see those cards, we can edit them, and we can start studying. So you'll see Hogar. Yep, so we have all of our cards showing up now, um, which is nice. And you might say, okay, this was a lot of work for just adding five flashcards when I could just add them manually. Um, but if you can imagine, if you read an entire book or a couple books, you might have 50 or 100 flashcards. Um, and I personally like, while I'm reading, being able to create the flashcard on my Kindle without having to stop, pull out my phone, and interrupt my reading to do that. All right, so now that we've set up this process and created our initial flashcards, I wanna show you how I would go about updating Anki with my latest flashcard. So when I create my CSV file, I don't want the stuff I've already imported into Anki to show up there. I only want the latest stuff that I care about. So that's why this step is gonna be slightly different. Um, but here's the magical command I'm gonna run. It's just essentially two commands in, in one, but this is just the one thing I would run every time um, that I'm ready to pull my latest flashcards from my Kindle. Um, so this runs Clippy exactly as before, but then it runs Marky a little different. This time it passes it our settings.json, which got created the initial time we ran it. We're running it with update outdate again, and we're gonna pass it a new flag latest CSV. Before I run this, I'm gonna, let me show you the settings file so you understand. Um, in here, we essentially have four categories. One is for books that we only want a CSV file for. We have the category both, which is for books that we want to create both a markdown and a CSV file for. And a category for just markdown and a category where we don't output anything. Um, and you probably don't, you don't really need to care about this. Um, if you just keep everything in both, you'll get markdown CSV for everything. It's very simple. Um, but, but you'll see that for each book, because we used that flag update output date um, last time, this is the date of the last highlight and note that I made in my, in that book, the last time that we created our flashcards. So this time, the program is gonna compare to this date and only because we're using the flag latest CSV, it's gonna only um, include the highlights and notes that have been created since the last date that's stored in that file. And additionally, it will then update um, the output date stored in that file. So the next time, it'll know that, um, oh, I've already seen these highlights and notes, so I don't need to include them. Um, so now let's actually go ahead and run that command. Clippy ran, update collection.json, and then Marky started. And this time, it's it, it noticed that there's a new book that's not yet in our settings file. So it's asking me what category to put it in, and I'm just gonna put it in both with everything else. And that's it, it outputted. Um, so if we go to our output folder, you'll see that I only have um, the new the new content that I added. I don't have the old ones, which is nice. So I can then um, repeat, the, repeat the same steps as before and save this and then import it into um, Anki and then now those flashcards are updated. And then I also now have this new book, Narnia, which I can look at. 
and we can see here okay here's the content I added to that book as well so now you've seen um, that's how I would go about updating okay you can imagine if you have a lot of books um, let's say I'm reading like multiple books in Spanish or different languages and I don't want to have a separate CSV file for all of them I have to import both of these files right now to Anki that's kind of annoying so if you want to do this the most efficient way you can actually edit the settings file so what I can do here is create a new category for just my Spanish books which I'll treat differently so I'm gonna copy the skip category actually add a comma here and I'm gonna rename this Spanish and now we need to add the books that we care about to that category so I'm gonna copy delete this comma just gonna copy the two Spanish books and put them in here okay and so we, for this category, we're not going to output a markdown. We're not going to output a CSV, but we are going to output a combined CSV. So I'm going to, here you're going to put a file name. I'll call it combinedspanish.csv. And instead of creating a CSV for each of these, it'll create a combined one with the content from both. All right, so before we run this, let's delete our old output folder. And then, all right, give it a run. And now if we look in the output folder, you'll see, okay, there's no longer a file for the Hunger Games and for Narnia. We just have a combined one, which right now is actually going to be empty, like I said, because there's been no new notes or highlights since the last time I ran this. Right now I can do some more reading, and and then the content for both books would show up. And just to show you, if I, if I get rid of this flag, latest CSV, and run it, now we can look at our output and you'll see that all the content from both Spanish books are there. So I can edit this one file, import it, and then um, the next time I only have that one file to work with. A lot simpler that way. In summary, you're just gonna run this command every time. And if you want to create custom uh, categories and settings, you can.